Welcome to the Million Dollar Equation Podcast, a podcast about the easiest, fastest way to build a million dollar business based on the best selling book, The Million Dollar Equation. If you love business, each episode reveals all of the core fundamental essentials for growth. Now, here's your host, Rochelle Shaw. Hey, okay, it's day two, and today we want to talk about implementation. You know, ideas make you feel good, but implementation is what really makes you money. So who cares about having a notebook full of ideas? Look, I get it. I love ideas. I love to sit and talk about business. I love to sit and create, you know, all of these plans, but implementation is what takes you from where you are to where you ultimately want to be. All right, so today I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that I do to get things done quicker and also to assess like where are you, where are you and what do you need done. So in the last video, I talked about the nine systems that you need to have to build your million dollar business. Hopefully you've already watched that video. If you haven't, stop this right now and go watch that video. It's 30 minutes and it's 30 minutes of me just explaining the million dollar equation to you and for you to assess your business and get that checklist, download it, go through each piece to make sure that you have each one of the systems. And what normally happens is after you do the assessment is you realize that I'm missing several systems here. And so that's what we're gonna to talk to you about today. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's what we're gonna to talk to you about today is how do we get all of these things done that happen to be on the list? So the first thing that I want you to do is realize that you know remember i have my notes here so if you you know today's like the roll up your sleeve kind of work day i haven't got my glasses over here so that you know we can really get to work and get to what we need to be but the first is i wanted to talk to you about reviewing the three ways to grow right so on a sheet of paper i'd love for you to make three big sections so that you understand that there's only three ways to grow your business. The first is to go out and get a new customer. The second is to get your customer to spend more with you during their transaction. So if they normally come in just to get the bread at the grocery store, that's why we've got all those things in the front right when you're going to check out that have the magazines and the gum and the candy and the bag of chips and the bottle of water. You know, do you know that that bottle of water that's cold in the refrigerator that's at the front of the grocery store is $1.89? Whereas that same bottle that's in just a different package that's in the back of the store that's not cold is 99 cents. So you're paying double at the front of the store than you could be by the back of the store. But that's, you know, that's part of my money honey segment that I do on our local Fox 5 here. But the second way that I talked about is increasing the transaction size. That's why they have those things in the front so that you know, okay, it's an impulse buy and they're just going to buy it. If you don't have those in your business, that should be one of the big highlights from yesterday and from yesterday's video that you have and that you're putting together. All right, and that third way is to get them to come back more often. So we don't just want you to come, you know, once a year and we never see you again, right? So that's why, you know, with the same grocery store analogy is that every single week they come out with a sale paper because if they can get you there two, three times a week buying again, now you are spending way more money than you would ever spend on just one transaction. So even if you are a doctor, you still have these same things, you know, how do you get them to come back more often? And one of the things is you make an assessment of the entire body when they come to see you. Okay, so I didn't take the Hippocratic Oath. So I don't have that do no harm. I look at it from a business perspective. And when I'm looking at the patient, I want to know everything that's wrong with you instead of just coming in and fixing one thing because now that's going to get you to come back more often it's going to get you to spend more for each transaction every time you see you we're taking more tests doing more things right so when we think about building the businesses in those three areas that's going to help you 
decide which area of the business that you're going to work on, okay? So if you already have new patients or if you already have customers, right? Then we need to make sure that first, before you do anything else, that you're getting them to come back more often and then you have something, something for them to buy in the next transaction, okay? So one of the notes that I have here on my list is that, you know, people always wanna start with new. Well, I just wanna get new people, you know, fresh blood. Well, that's the most expensive way. You know that because I've told you that a thousand times. But it also is the longest sales cycle. It's the longest time that you have to wait until you get money. Let me say that again. When you just focus on the new, it's the longest time that you have to wait for you to get money in your bank account. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm very impatient. I'm like, oh no, I need to get paid today. <laughs> Why do I have to wait so long? Well, you have to wait so long because the customer patient client doesn't know you. They don't trust you. They're not going to buy from you that first time. So I don't care how many ads that you do, they're not going to come in and buy. That's why, you know, less than 8% of the people who hear an ad the first time ever buy from you. Less than 2% of the people that come to your website the first time ever take an action because it's not about that. You have to nurture them. Nurture them. Yes, so that they will pay you, okay? So I'm famous for calling it what I call booty call marketing. So I watch people do very strange things and that they only wanna show up when it's time to get paid. They never wanna show up for the time when it's nurturing. So I said, you know, every story starts with a boy. <laughs> and so if you only show up when it's time to, Mm, do something else then we don't have a relationship this is just that it's not us nurturing us spending a lot of time together so that's why I call it don't do that booty call marketing that's just bad mm -mm -mm. bad 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 all right so now that you've got your three sections on your paper now I want you to write under those three sections here are the three really big sections that when we work on the business when I go into a client's office, this is the first three sections that I start up. okay? The first one is before they know me. So before the client, before the customer knows the business, okay? So how do we get them to know us, to raise their hand, to say, yes, I'm interested in what you're selling, and how do we take them from raising their hand saying, you know what? I do have a pain in my back, maybe I should go to the doctor, to I should choose you as my doctor instead of my medical doctor, my chiropractor, my massage therapist, you know, there's all these other solutions. So how do you take them there? So that's section one. Section two is while they're paying you, what type of experience are they having? So you know why people hate to buy a car? Because it's that experience during the car buying that's just awful, awful, right? They give you one price, they go to get it approved, they come back, it just feels like, ew, icky, such a hustle. So is that what happens in your business when somebody goes to buy from you? How is that? How is the experience? Is it pleasant? Is it nice? Do they feel great? Do they feel like you're finally going to solve their problem? Do they have to wait in a long line? I went to a store last week to buy something for my daughter and I got there and the specific product that I wanted, it was empty on the shelf. And there was a sign, a handwritten sign like this, right? That said, we don't have the product. We've checked the back. Don't ask. Three exclamation marks. Damn. For real? I was like, okay, why am I even at this store? And I got my kid and we walked out and we went somewhere else. Is that experience nice? Or how about when they go to check out? One of the things that we have with one of my private clients is that we have an annual party every year. 
well, the party is so big now and we've done such a great job at marketing the party and getting people that, by the way, it's a really fun case study that I don't think I'm sharing it with you um, in the next video, but maybe I will of how we did $62,000 in one night. If you're interested in that, leave a note below and I'll let you know in the Facebook comments and I'll figure out a way that will incorporate it in this process. But now the problem is that people are coming and waiting in line and they're really unhappy about it. So it's every November and we're already planning how we're gonna fix this, how we make this experience so much better when they come to the party. Okay? So is it difficult to buy from you and look at it? That should be in your second section. What does that experience look like while they're with you? Do they get a gift when they're done? You know what's nice is when I go and valet park my car at a specific really high-end hotel here in Las Vegas. And when I get in it, there's chocolates in there. My car is, my seat is exactly how I left it. My air is running cold and I have chocolates in my seats. How nice is that? Okay. It's an awesome experience making sure that the experience that you send someone through. One of the things that we do with Miles, it, it, you can see that my brain just kind of went left. <laughs> but one of the things that we do with him is that when after they buy, that he goes and he experiments on the courts with them. Remember he sells backyard basketball courts and tennis courts and he's the one that we took him from $80,000 to he's on track to do 1.6 million. He's already done 812,000 at the end of June. Well, actually it was in the middle of June. So I don't know what the number is now, uh, but we're going to talk about him in the next video. But one of the experiences that he has is that he goes on the court and he plays, you know, pick a ball with them. He shoots from the three point line. If they got one, he just makes it a total experience. So they can't wait to talk about him. So that's the second section of what you should have on your paper is what kind of experience happens when you buy and how can you make that better, easier, faster, deliver more value for your customer? All right. Thank you so much for listening to my passion project and the million dollar equation podcast of which you're hearing if you like it, I love it. <laughs> so click the subscribe button to get each week your new favorite episode. And then the last part of the section that we work on is after the person gives you money and the transaction is over, how do we get them talking about you, referring you, saying lovely things, giving you a testimonial, all of those things that are going to help you grow. Because remember, there's only three ways to grow. So in the first section before they meet you, that should be the last section you work on, to be quite honest with you. Once again, it's the hardest. Most people start there and it's the slowest way to cash. So you need to do that one once you've got a steady cash flow coming in. So the best place to start immediately is in section three with your old customers, somebody who's already met you, somebody who already knows you and who can't wait to refer you. If you didn't do a good job, then remember yesterday we talked about referral systems, then you want to work on a reactivation system with them making sure that they fall in love with you again and that they can't wait to go and tell people. Okay. That's section three. So when you work on your business, you know, there's working in your business and then there's working on your business, but when you work on your business, you want to have in front of you that sheet of paper that you just wrote down the three ways to grow, and then the three sections that you need to work on. Yeah. So you're going to take yesterday's checklist. You're going to do your assessment to make sure that you have a target market, that you have a marketing calendar, that you have your follow up. Okay. So your follow up is going to fall into all three categories, all three sections. Before they meet you, you need to have some type of follow up of, of 
What do you send to them? How do you talk to them? How do you get that done? Then you need to have in the middle a follow-up of when they're paying you money. How are you following up with them now? Especially if it's a long transaction, like buying a house. You know, what's going on? How do you keep them updated on when the mortgage lender approves their loan on the last three items that they need from a home inspection? What happens during the home inspection? How are you keeping that? How are you following up? And then the last is how are you following up with them after they've purchased from you? Even with a house, if they've purchased from you and they only buy a house once every 10 years, you're making a mistake by believing that all you need to do is get new. I need to get it out there and get new people and that's what they tell you. Oh, and you can prospect and you can constantly prospect. But you are leaving so much money on the table when you don't focus on your people who have already bought from you and had a wonderful experience. Because they're going to tell somebody else. If they've had a bad experience, quite frankly, they're going to tell a whole bunch more people. So that's why I tell you to start with the last section and then the second thing I want you to work on is the middle section is making sure that the experience that they spend with you is fantastic because if it isn't you know and if you've read the million dollar equation you know we talk about the retention systems with the wowing welcome and the thank you cards and the birthday cards and all those things to keep them beholden to you to keep them attached to you to keep them feeling like they are important to you. Because as long as you've done that, they're going to refer you, given the opportunity. Okay, all right. So now that we have the sections done, because that's the most important. Because half the time, most folks don't even know what they should be working on. So now you have what my formula is of you've got the three ways to grow, you have the three sections, and you start with number one, the last section, after they've purchased from you, because you can do that today. You can pick up the phone and talk to old customers, see how they're doing, see how they love the experience, see how their house is going, see how whatever you created for them is going, see where they put the lovely picture that they bought from you, see how they're playing on their backyard court, see how their business is growing so that you can prepare for their next tax season, right? That's what you can do right now. The second thing that you're going to work on is the experience. So somebody who's going through it right now with you and who's buying from you is that you're going to make sure that the experience is better. Okay? That experience is better. And between those two things, that's going to change your cash flow dramatically. All right? It's going to change it. Now, after you've done that and now that that's flowing, now let's work on getting new and what needs to happen when you get new. So we talked to you briefly about buoy call marketing, right? Okay. There's nothing worse than the only time you show up is you show up to get paid. That's the worst because now they're going to say things to you like, how come every time I call you, you don't call me back? How come it's so hard to get in touch with you now after I purchased from you than when you were trying to get my business? Okay. That's awful. When they start posting on social media, that's really bad. That's why I want you to fix those other two portions before we start working on this. Because the most important thing that's going to happen when you meet somebody new, whether you meet them in person, whether they've gone to your website, is they're going to start with you way up here, okay? And then they're gonna start dropping you down the list. So they're going to look and now they're testing you through to see if you are worthy of getting their money. Okay. So they're going to go, Oh, you know what? The website, they said that they would call back or that they're open between nine and six. And I called at quarter to six and nobody answered. Mm, now you've come down. Oh, well, when I met them, they told me that they'd call me next week and now they haven't. So now you come down. Okay. So everything that you do that is not in the way that you said that you would do, the customer moves farther and farther away from paying you money. So 
before we get to marketing tactics <laughs> or strategy, I'm going to need you <laughs> to fix those things, okay? To fix those things. And then you can come back and start looking to, okay, is it that you are going to send them to your website? Okay, what's the goal and are you making any money? So last night I was talking to a new client and I was saying to her that some of the challenges that happen is that I watch people try to reverse engineer what I've done. So instead of coming in and buying the program, they go, well, I'm gonna just copy everything that Rochelle does. And they try to copy it all the way from, they will take an email that I sent. I just have to tell you the truth. Yeah. One of them took a, an exact email and she didn't know that I was on her list, I guess, and sent out my exact email to her list. And I went, okay, so I teach you how to use other people's stuff and leverage it, but I don't teach you how to blatantly steal. I mean, really? And then here's the problem. It didn't work. And it didn't work because she doesn't have the complete system. Okay? So most of the time, you don't see everything that I do depending on where you click how much you spent with me you get a different promotion <laughs> you know but nobody sees all of that they keep trying to stay back here and then reverse engineer it okay you can't do that you really need to come in see the entire system and build the entire system that's why I was telling you about the three sections because each one of those people get something different they don't all get the same thing so now I have officially overwhelmed you, right? And now I know that you're saying to me, okay, Rochelle, how do you get it all done? All right, it is more than just outsourcing. Because here's what I found that when I was outsourcing is that now I have to follow up with the person that I outsourced. I have to make sure that they are on track and that they are doing it. So that became just an overwhelming. It, it, I was trying to think of a word that wasn't a cuss word. <laughs> so it was just bad. Hey you, we are so grateful that you are part of MDE Nation. Are you enjoying this episode? Let me know what you think, especially if you have a question. I would love to answer it personally. You can go to rochelleshaw.com forward slash podcast to get more information about each episode or to be reminded of the MDE weekly assignment and so much more. Go to rochelleshaw.com forward slash podcast. So here's some of the things that you can do. Yes, can you go to Fiverr? Absolutely. Yes, can you find somebody that can do something for you? Yes, but I don't want you to outsource your marketing. I don't want you to outsource these things. Now, if you have to outsource the technology, then yes, outsource the technology, but don't outsource the creative because nobody can sell you better than you can sell you. Nobody. Okay, because nobody's had all the experiences that you've had. All right, so implementation. How do you manage all of the implementation? Well, for one is you start with the fastest way to money, and that is in section three, okay? <laughs> then you do section two, and then you do section one. So that while section two and three are working to bring you in money, then you can spend your time working on section one and getting people into a nurture cycle. So creating what we call as a lead magnet, right? Creating a way to get people to raise their hand to say, yes, I want what you have. And then bringing them into your business and then showing them other success stories, showing them how it's supposed to work with you, giving them little tastes to lead them to the big solution, okay? I'm sorry. Giving them little taste to lead them to the big solution. But if you haven't done that, 
you're going to be really frustrated in the fact that you're going to talk to a whole lot of people and a whole lot of people aren't going to be ready to buy from you. So one of the things that I do and what we include in almost every training that we have is checklists, templates, fill in the blank things so that you don't start with a blank piece of paper. Okay. You start with, okay, this is what I did with my customer and here's how it can work with your customer. Now you just have to take out my information and put in your information. So you want to search out templates of all the things that you need so that you now have shortcuts. Some of the ways that I use Fiverr is I will have Fiverr create the template for me. So I'll have them create the first draft. And then I take that first draft and I leverage the first draft. So I hardly ever use it just exactly how Fiverr gives it to me or the person that was on Fiverr. I always take it and adjust it and tweak it and use it so that it works for me. Having a big swipe file. So what's a swipe file? A swipe file is, and I have several on my desk right now. I'm not going to show you what my desk looks like. Okay. Just know that Einstein said that a true sign of a very smart person is a messy desk. <laughs> But a swipe file is I've always got examples of what other people are doing, right, in the business. So here's, I've got just a magazine here. It's the Eating Well magazine, okay? So the reason why it's on my desk is that I loved their headlines that they had, which is 50 easy recipes. So now 50 easy marketing tactics, 50 easy ways to help with back pain, 50 easy, you know, accounting tweaks to change your business. Right. So that becomes your template. Here's one, 16 new knockout salads, 16 new knockout salads. So 16 new ways to build your business quickly, 16 new. And then you put in, you know, 16 new knockout titles or 16 new knockout headlines to make the customer buy immediately. Right? So that's how you use templates to get you to your implementation faster. But to start with a blank piece of paper like this, that's going to drive you crazy. And you always feel like you can't get stuff done. So what the one girl did who stole my stuff blatantly is, I mean, she even stole my title. She even stole the title of the workshop. How the hell you steal the title of the workshop? So how do you know? <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> is you take somebody else's, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you adjust it to fit into your business, right? So you start with templates, checklists, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, several of you know that this free mini course is ways that I'm giving you actually a template to show you how to do it in your own business. So you look at and then you implement okay so here's my thoughts on will it work will it work yeah will it work the best that you want it to no but the bottom line is that it should generate something it'll generate one to two new customers for you and then you can add on to it and do more and more and more yeah okay and then the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is not only the outsourcing, but it's creating your own right? and getting over what it's supposed to look like. Nobody knows what it's supposed to look like. Your customers don't know what it's supposed to look like. So in my telephone business, especially when I was rebuilding it back, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any credit. I didn't have a rich uncle. I was just trying to sell and market my way out of this $2 million deficit that I was in. And I needed the most economical ways to make it happen. So let me tell you what I did. And I actually just did this for a client the other day, so it still works. Is I went to a Office Max, I can just tell you, it was Office Max, okay? And I bought a package of cardstock. I designed something in my Microsoft publisher. It was just all black lettering with a, well, it was white lettering with a black background. I bought colored cardstock 
and I went to the copy center and I copied my one pager onto fuchsia cardstock. Then I took it to the girl at the counter for 10 cents a piece. Okay, I got six postcards on the page, 10 cents a piece. And then I had her cut them for me. It cost $1.99 for her to cut it. Now I had postcards that I could mail and it cost under $20. I know. It still worked. My customers came in from those silly fuchsia postcards that cost me $20. And I would send them a hundred at a time because, you know, postcard stamps at that point was like 25 cents. So I'd send them a hundred at a time. I knew that I could get $25. And I'd send out a hundred and I'd get one to two customers from every hundred I sent. So I want you to get over what you think, how much it's supposed to cost and what you think it's supposed to look like. Your customer doesn't know. You need to do whatever it takes to get whatever out as quickly as possible. Whatever it takes to get whatever out as quickly as possible, because the faster you get it out, the better opportunity you have to make money because it is a marathon it is not a sprint it is a marathon and as long as you don't give up you can get there all right so that's my 30 minutes for today so tomorrow tomorrow i'm going to share with you some case studies of exactly just like i'm telling you how we worked at fresh start and how i did that with the postcard i'm going to go through not only my business but several of my clients that I've had over the last eight years, 10, oh my gosh, I know. Well, you can see from the gray <laughs> over the last 10 years and how I've worked with them to build their own million dollar businesses. Some have reached the million dollars. Some look, all they wanted was an extra thousand dollars a month. So I've got those examples for you. And I have a gal that we got to five figures a month in six weeks fun 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 I've got some real stuff for you tomorrow tomorrow so I will unlock that video tomorrow so that you can see or I'm not sure when you're watching this so in the next couple days if it's gray that means the video is still locked so I'll unlock that video so that you can see all the success stories and everybody who's going from where they wanted to be all the way to where they are now how they started what they used how they implemented the million dollar equation to work in their business all right so i've had a great time hopefully you've had a great time i'm going to make some money <laughs> so i'll see you tomorrow all right bye bye